Hey guys, it's James Upjohn here with a free Rank Snap training webinar this evening. Before we get started, I just need to do a quick audio and visual check. So if you can hear me okay, will you just put a one in the chat box for me, please? Fantastic. Thank you very much, everyone. We've got loads and loads of members on this evening. Thank you all so much for coming along. It was quite short notice. Um, there's going to be lots of people watching the replay, and there's probably going to be people in the group saying that they couldn't get on the webinar, etc., because it's capped at a maximum of 100 attendees. So if you're watching the replay of this, which I'll post later on today, and you didn't get to watch it live, um, I'll just say I'm sorry for that, but hopefully you get a ton of value. If you are watching live, um, be sure to use the questions box. I will be stopping every sort of five or six minutes just to look at the questions box. So if you have any questions at all, please be sure to post them in there and I'll be more than happy to get as many of your questions answered as I can over the next hour. I am going to try and keep this webinar to an hour. It's already 9 p.m. in the UK, so um, 10 o'clock is a, a good time for us to finish this one. Um, I'm just going to share my screen as well. And I'm just going to click to share my entire screen. And then you should be looking at what I'm looking at. It should just say you are now sharing your entire screen. You can now switch to the window or app you want to share with your audience. If you can see that, will you just put a one in the chat box again as well for me, please? Okay, absolutely fantastic. Right, brilliant stuff. Right, guys, I've got a question for you before we get started so that I can sort of hopefully tailor this webinar to the majority. Um, do me a favor. If you're doing local or client SEO, put a one in the chat box. If you're doing affiliate stuff, put a two in the chat box. And um, I just want to see where you guys are at. We've got plenty of affiliate. We've got plenty of local as well. It seems like it's a good mix of both. Okay, brilliant. And then final question is if you consider yourself to be absolutely brand new to seo put the letter a if you consider yourself to be pretty good at seo put a b and if you consider yourself to be quite the expert put a c i just want to quickly see so i know how to gauge this we've got loads of people that are doing pretty well with it we've got a few people that consider themselves an expert but we've also got a lot of people that consider themselves to be quite new to seo if any of you guys have ever been on my webinars before, you'll know that I don't like to leave anybody behind, okay? I like to explain stuff so that everybody gets what's going on. If some of you think that it's a little bit basic, please bear with us. I don't want to go too technical and then just completely confuse everybody that put, just put an A in there. So hopefully that will be fair. And then obviously, once we've done this webinar, if there's enough demand for it and people say, hey, you know, can we do something that is a bit more advanced or whatever, um, there can be options available. So most of you have got RankSnap and I've seen loads and loads of posts in the group saying, you know, we just want to know how to use this tool. And you will see if you've been following the group that lots and lots of people say um, that this is a tool that can help you with your overall SEO strategy. I want to be 100% clear on this right at the start of the webinar that this tool builds links and those links can help you to rank in Google if you've got an entire SEO strategy. I'm going to show you a safe and good way to use this tool. I'm going to give you a basic campaign and I'm going to explain the who, why, what, when and where and even if you've got no idea about SEO, if you just do these little simple campaigns that I'm going to show you and explain why, you shouldn't really do too much to hurt rankings, okay? There is a temptation for people to want to go super fast when building links and build massive complicated campaigns, but if you don't know what you're doing, you can potentially hurt your website. And so I'm going to show you something, as I said, that's going to be safe. I'm going to explain why, and then as you get a little bit more confident, or if you already consider yourself an expert, you should be able to figure out for yourself how you can ramp things up for the benefit of your website and your rankings. Um, a couple of people are just asking questions, so I'm just going to have a quick look over that. How do you know if I am on V? How do I know if I'm on V2 or V3? Um, I'm really not sure about that, Michael. And um, the best person to ask about that would be Alex. Um, Alex is in the group. Just tag him in it 
So let's start a thread um, for if somebody start a thread in the ranks in that group now. I can't jump over there and do that. But if you've got questions like that and I say ask Alex, post it in there and I'll direct him to that thread at the end of this webinar. And uh, I'll make sure that he gets all of those questions answered for you. If possible, could you explain how to use it for YouTube vids? Absolutely, Paul. I will go through that. Are you going to record this? Yes, this is being recorded right now. So um, it's beneficial for everybody. You'll be able to watch the replays of this as well. Um, how uh, do, 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 Will there be a replay of this? Sorry, yep, that's somebody else asking the same question. And what's the link that, what's the link, the group I forgot to join? Okay, so in Ranks Out Campaigns, if you go to um, the left-hand side, you'll see right here, so Ranks Out Not Online, here it says Facebook group. If you just click on Facebook group, it will take you straight through to RankSnap. And then there's the group there, RankSnap. Um, I will just share that in the chat box, just in case anybody wants quick access to that now. That is in there. And also, I just want to show you if we go into the help section, we can scroll down. Alex has put some videos together on how to create stuff. If we go a little bit further down than that, you'll see there are some webinars. These aren't new webinars. They're over a year old, but they still understand, They still explain certain things that you're going to need to know. And as I said to you, this tool is just one aspect of an entire SEO strategy. So we've got me talking about making sure that your website's on-page SEO is done okay. We've got perfect on-page SEO, free webinars on that because on-page SEO is one third of your entire SEO strategy. So making sure that's absolutely nailed down is gonna be key. You can have absolutely amazing on-page SEO and rank without links if your on-page is good enough, or you might start showing up in the search results and then you just need to give it a little bit of a nudge with some links. Of course, if it's a super competitive niche, you're gonna need great on-page SEO and amazing links as well. So you'll need to be doing things like rank snap but you might also need to be getting additional links as well. Um, your social media is going to be a big part of it as well. So I said there's three aspects to ranking. You've got on-page SEO, which is all the stuff you do on your website. You've got building your trust, which is going to be showing Google, hey, look, I've got reviews. Hey, look, people like me on Facebook. I've got a Twitter account. I've got map reviews. And people are sharing my social stuff. And then you've got the authority so on page trust and authority and the authority is what comes from the link building which websites are linking back to your website and how good are those websites so within that authority section is where you can use rank snap but that doesn't mean for one second that you can forget the trust or the on-page seo so be sure to go through these webinars here as i said they are about a year old but there is still a lot of value in there uh, we've got RankSnap training Q&A, we've got RankSnap training Q&A again, and then we've got how to rank with RankSnap at the bottom. They were absolutely free webinars. They are about a year old. You can follow those along, and hopefully that will help you if you're completely brand new. If you're a little bit more advanced, I just finished the webinar series with Alex Krulik, and that was a paid webinar series that cost $67. Do you absolutely need it if you're on a budget? No. Don't buy it, watch these webinar series, try and get a few rankings, and then you can think, okay, now I wanna move on to the next step. But for those of you that want it, it's $67 one time, and there's about 10 hours worth of video training that I did with Alex, where we went really, really in depth. We talked about things like PBNs, we talked about things like other types of links that you can be building. We talked about how you can use Rank Snap for building links to your PBNs, et cetera. And for anybody that's out here now that's brand new thinking what are PBNs, it's just basically a private blog network and it's something that you own. And I discuss that all on those webinars. Anyway, back to the main purpose of this call. I'm going to go through and do a campaign with you now. And start in every campaign that I do, I always like to start by getting a fresh piece of content. I don't like to write content myself. It takes too long. And there are services out there that you can use to get articles very, very cheaply. So I use INeedArticles.com. And you can see here that I just paid $5 for somebody to write me a 500-word article. 
It cost me $5 on this one. I ordered a second one HD brow treatments that cost me $9, still 500 words. The main difference there was that the top one, I requested that I got the article back within 24 hours, so they add a premium to it. If you want to sign up to I Need Articles, I'll show you how easy it is to actually order an article. You just click on Request once you're logged in, and just click on Articles, and then just put in your keyword. So my wife's website is, um, she's a beauty salon, and she's based in a town called Village. Okay, so I just literally put that in here like this, and then I'm going to choose, do I want it written in US English or UK English? We're in the UK, so we'll choose that. Article count one. You can see here minimum number of words. Sometimes I only order 300 word articles and it still works absolutely fine. 500 word articles, because there's more meat on those articles, there's more words on them, there's going to be more chance that Google crawls it and indexes it. But again, this is going to come down to budget. Do you want your links to be slightly better and pay a little bit more? If you're not that bothered about them being amazing or you're on a budget and you can't afford it, we, are, we have used 300 word articles and it's worked okay. So you've got some options down the bottom here. This is what I was talking to you about, guaranteed 24 hours. It will cost you an extra um, 80 cents per 100 words. If you're in a rush, choose it. But I only wait two or three days anyway if I don't click 24 hours. So just think ahead. Don't worry about pressing the guaranteed 24 hours and you'll get articles back quite quickly. By default, they check both of these, in-depth research dip end and provide um, specific style. Don't worry about those. They cost you extra money and just uncheck them. If you uncheck both of those, you can see now a 300 word article will only cost you $3.15. Order it, wait a day or two to get that back. And then once you've got it, we can think about spinning those articles. As I said, I like to use one new article for every campaign I run. So if you're on a budget and you're at 300 words per article, just think that every campaign is going to cost you $3.15 for the fresh piece of content. I'm just going to quickly switch back to the um, Q&As and see, has anyone got any questions in regards to that? Ron, you said the screen is too small to see, and um, that'll be down to you. I'm not sure if you're on a mobile device. If you're on the website, um, if you're on your desktop, you, you just need to maximize it. I think for everybody else, this should be maximized. Everybody else, if you can see this in full screen, will you just put a one in the chat box for me, please? Yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, Ron, figure out how to just stretch that for you, and then um, that's on your end rather than on my end. I hope you can figure that one out. If you can't figure it out, don't worry about it. There is a recording available, and the recording, the recording will definitely be full size. Okay, perfect. Desktop's fine. Brilliant. In RankSnap under support, I go to register, and it says, sorry, but an administrator has currently disabled new registrations. I have sent emails and no answer. Michael, I'll definitely try and get you um, responses to that. As I said, if somebody can create a thread in the Facebook group and just call it, um, I don't know, something like uh, RankSnap webinar questions, just leave a comment in that just to, with exactly what you've written there, and I'll just get Alex to have a look at that entire thread at the end and work through those questions with him. Um, click arrow top right of chat box. Okay, cool, cool. And um, I'm guessing that's for people to maximize that. Um, how do you shrink the chat? Oh, yeah, exactly like that. Just click that button there and it should go away. Um, let me just see if there's anything else. Can you make your screen larger? I mean, this is as big as it will go, Michael. I'm not sure how to make it larger. I'm sorry about that. Um, are you then? Okay, cool. So we're probably, okay, it says yes, better. Fantastic. Cool, cool. So once we've got our article, I'm not going to order that there because I've already got some. Once we've got our article, we just need to go in and have a look at the article. Bearing in mind this costs $5 on Beauty Salon Billings. In Billings, there are many women that want to make sure that they are looking their best. For this reason, they tend to visit a beauty salon to feel pampered whilst they are getting their hair and beauty tra treatments that they love. Okay, so it reads okay. I mean, it's just a few dollars, so but that's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do next is I need to spin this article so that every single time 
that we create a new link, it shows up a slightly different version of the article. I'm just going to explain spin tax really quickly to people just so that if they're brand new to this and they're not sure what spin tax is doing, um, they'll be able to follow it, what, what's happening next. So magic submitters programmed. Uh, sorry, I say magic submitter. I, I mean rank snap. Um, just quickly, the reason that I said magic submitter then is a slip of the tongue. I used to do a lot of training webinars for Alex. I was his official coach for magic submitter. Magic Submit was had lots going on with it. You had to pay for your proxies. You had to pay for captures. There was hundreds and hundreds of associated costs. So Alex made Rank Snap and decided to take care of all of the proxies and the captures and everything else. So if you hear me say Magic Submit, oh, that is literally just a force of habit, and I mean Rank Snap. So um, the way that Rank Snap works is if you give it content and it's going to go and post that content somewhere. You can give it variations, okay, using something called spin tax. And spin tax is basically curly brackets like that and the pipe separator symbol, which on a Windows keyboard is next to the um, left shift button on most Windows keyboards. So we've got a curly bracket, a pipe, and then another curly bracket. And all that means is the curly bracket is just basically saying choose and then the pipe bracket is just based or the pipe symbol is just basically or. OK, so choose or and then anything that's written between that is the choices that it can make. So, for example, if I was to say to it, I went to the park. OK, I could when given the content to rank snap, I could say I went to the park. I went to the recreation ground. I went to the cinema. I went to the beach, okay? And all I need to do is just put these choose in, and then you just close it with the closing bracket. And then any anything that's in the, between these pipes are the different options. So what will happen is when ranks that post to one website, it would say, I went to the park. When it posts to the next website, it might say, I went to the beach. When you post to the next website, it might say, I went to the cinema. OK, this is called spin tax. And the more spin tax we have in our articles, the more unique we can make them. So instead of saying I went to the park, I could say I went to, I drove to, I visited. OK, and now we could instead of saying I, we could also say I or we or they. OK, and now just from that one sentence that was originally I went to the park. We've actually got a whole lot of different combinations that this could be. What you do to find out how many combinations you've got is you times all of the options by each other. So we've got three options here times three options here. So that's nine different options, but times one, two, three, four, nine, eighteen, twenty-seven, thirty-six. There's thirty-six different possible combinations that that one sentence could now be. And every time RankSnap goes to a website to post that, I went to the park it will just choose a completely random version of it, okay? That's what spin tax is. And when we are posting links with RankSnap, what we don't want to do is post the exact same article to every single website that we create a link on. If all of the content is exactly the same, Google will just say, okay, clearly somebody's using an automation tool or doesn't know what they're doing with link building. They're just taking the same article and posting it to all these different websites online, WordPress, Blogger, uh, Tumblr, etc. So what we can do is rewrite the article to look like this, and we can make it unique enough that every single time RankSnap posts a new piece of content to a website, it's it looks like it's been written by somebody else or it's completely unique. Let me just quickly check in the chat box if you understand what I'm talking about there. Put a one in the chat box if you understand, and put a two if you're just completely confused. Hopefully, we're going to get loads and loads and loads of ones here. But as I said, I don't like to leave anybody alone. Okay, fantastic. Great stuff. Okay, perfect. So we could just go through an entire article and manually put all of the spin tax in. But can you imagine how long that's going to take? And when I first started using automation tools, that's exactly what we did. We literally went through line by line in Billinge, within Billinge, 
we went through line by line like this and um, added all the spin tax. It took ages and it was absolutely horrible. So people created tools that would allow you to do this level of spinning. That's what we refer to it as. If anybody talks about spun articles or spinning, that's exactly what they mean, putting all the spin tax in. And different people created tools that would allow us to speed this process up massively. So let me just quickly get rid of that. One of those is a tool that's created by Alex Trulick, the owner of the software, because he realized that people needed to run articles. So we can copy and paste an article into here, and you can see straight away that this software has picked up black words and red words. Red words are basically phrases that can be spun. So all we need to do is just click on that, and a Magic Article Rewriter is available at $47 one-time payment. And then basically, when you come in here and you put it in, you click on this little notepad and pencil, and then it gives you suggestions of other words. So that's Beauty Salon Billings. I can change it to Salon, Cosmetic Salon, um, Beauty Shop, and that's going to be good enough for me. And be careful when you're using the spinner. You can't lose sight of the overall sentence or, or, or the overall phrase that you were trying to spin. If we just get on single words, what could end up happening is you could end up spinning something that when you do the rewrite of it, it looks absolutely ridiculous and doesn't make any sense. And so let me explain what I mean there. Here it says, in Billinge, there are many women that. So if I want to spin, there are many. I need to make sure that I don't remember, that I don't forget what was said before it and what was said after it. In Billinge, there are many women that. In Billinge, there are lots of women that. That makes sense. In Billings, there are numerous women that, that makes sense. There are various women that, but um, various doesn't really make sense. There are several women that, there are lots of women that, there are quite a few women that, there are a number of women that. Okay, that's probably enough. We've got quite a few there. Let, women that. But this ladies wouldn't make sense because it, it would then become, in Billings, there are ladies want to make sure Okay, do you see what I mean? So we can we can write stuff in here ourselves. We can say ladies that or ladies who. Okay, and then we can move on to the next word like this or the next phrase. And we just basically, we can go through the entire article like this. It will take about 20 minutes or so. And then once that's done, we can click on this re rewrite article button and you'll see all the unique versions of the article. So this says cosmetic salon billing. In billing, there are... A number of ladies who want to make we click that again it's now to salon billings there are a number of ladies that want to make click it again and you'll see if you go through the whole article and do that you'll be generating unique versions of it each time um there are lots of ladies that okay um let me just quickly check again just to make sure that you are all still following along just stick a one in the chat box if this is all still making sense. And like I said, the cost of that is $47. So before I get started with every campaign, I like to have a fresh article and then I like to make sure that it's properly spun all through so that we've got a nice, decent bit of content that we can post to uh, Rank Snap. What about Spin Rewriter? Exactly. So if any of you are eagle-eyed, you might have already noticed that I've got the Spin Rewriter tab open in the uh, one of the tabs open in my top browser. So what I want to do is I'm very, very mindful of the fact that some people are on a budget. Some people have got a bit of money to spend, and then some people will just prefer to pay the best price to get the best toll and save themselves a load of time. So if you're completely skin, you're just getting started and you haven't got any money, by all means, just sit there manually and put that spin tax in like I showed you on the notepad file. If you can afford $47, buy a Magic Article Rewriter and go through word by word and it will choose the spin tax for you. Or if you've got $77 available, Spin Rewriter is available for you where you click two buttons and it gives you a very, very well spun article. Um, and, and all you have to do is click two buttons. The cost of that is $77 per year. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And for me, as somebody just asked, what about Spin Rewriter? Um, Birgit, it looks like that says. Um, for me, 
I prefer to use Spin Rewriter because I don't want to spend 20 minutes spinning an article. So let me take this article that we've just had and I'm going to click that. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to head over to Spin Rewriter. And then we can come into here and click Rewrite. This is not by Alex Krulik. This is just a, um, somebody that's created this tool. Um, it's online and it's available for people, as I said, $77 a year. You enter your article in like this, and then you click Rewrite Article, and it's preparing the best synonyms for your article. It gives you the option of whether you want to super spin this or you want to make it so that it's still um, legible um etc so this is just going through the article for me now and um, i didn't choose any settings i literally just clicked rewrite article and you'll be able to see if we go down it's given me a 99 percent uniqueness and it's done all of them spinning for me so on beauty salon on beauty parlor on just salon billings in billings there are many numerous lots of several women ladies females that want to, wish to, intend to, make sure, ensure, make certain, see to it, that they are looking their best, finest, ideal, okay? For this reason, because of this, therefore, consequently, they tend, they have a tendency, they often tend to visit, go to, check out, or see a beauty salon, beauty parlor, or salon to feel, to really feel pampered or spoiled whilst they are getting, obtaining, the hair and as well as and also beauty charm appeal elegance treatment or therapies okay so you see what that did there um that was just clicking one button what i am going to do is i'm just going to hit the back on that um th there is something that i needed to do with that beauty salon is actually a keyword so i want to make sure that it appears in the article so in, um, before i click rewrite article i'm just going to click on settings and we're going to say words or phrases and then you can see here you can say do you want your article to be most readable or do you want it to use synonyms that are reliably correct or do you want the most unique don't ever choose most unique you'll end up with a load of rubbish it will pick just about every possible known synonym there is for any given word and it will create so many variations you'll end up with something that doesn't read well at all so for me, because we're not going to create thousands of links or even hundreds of links, I'm actually going to choose this to be the most readable, only the synonyms that are definitely correct. And then I'm going to put in here, beauty salon. I don't want it to spin beauty salon. Remember when we was just reading that article, it changed beauty to charm. It, and, and, and so if I've got an article that's talking about charm shops, well, that's not a beauty salon. So I definitely want to make sure that I keep my protected keyword right. So we'll do that, and then we'll click Rewrite Article. And it's preparing the best synonyms. And just bear with me one second. I'm just going to mute my mic for one second while I just grab a bit of drink. Burger, you said you bought that you, um, you bought that several years ago and it's still valid. If you were one of the early adopters of um, if you were one of the early adopters of Magic Article Rewriter, that's still valid. It's just a one-time payment of forty-seven dollars. If you're talking about Spin Rewriter, you might have bought it years ago and it's still valid because when they first launched, they just did a one-time price um, and they give people the option to upgrade to a lifetime license for ridiculously cheap. So you won't need to upgrade anything or do anything. It's just as you log into the website, it will give you the correct version when you log into Spin Rewriter. So this is doing the one-click rewrite now. And I told it not to spin Beauty Salon. So you can see there, it hasn't spun Beauty Salon. It has left it like that. And if I wanted to, I could manually click on it and correct it myself. Okay. But this is looking pretty good. I know that it's going to be only choosing the best ones. So now I've got an article 
that I can use for Spin Rewriter. And I just need to click finalize article. Be sure to do that because that corrects things like um, gra grammatical errors at that point. If it if words should be an rather than a, like an apple, a banana, if you click finalize article, it fixes that properly for you. Otherwise, it just spins like apple, banana, orange, and it might say a apple, a banana, a orange, which isn't grammatically correct. Hope that makes sense. So we've now got our article here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop it into a notepad file. Now, the title isn't spun at all. So this is why I like to own Magic Article Rewriter and Spin Rewriter. I want to make sure that it's not using the exact same title every single time, I, but I want to be the one that's in control of spinning it. So I can just take my title and manually do this in Magic Article Rewriter. It's going to be really quick for me to do. So your title should be the most spun. Your title is going to be used for your bookmarks. It's going to be used for your um, blog titles. It's going to be used for a few different types of links in the software. So what I like to do is just write how to find a um, how uh, tips for using um, beauty salons in Billinge. So that's one full title, whoops, Billinge. That's one full title, but I actually like to write a couple of titles. So tips for using beauty salons in beauty, then the next one will be beauty salon Billinge, um, comma, um, top tips. Okay, so something similar to the first title, but by creating two different titles, I can now spin both of these and then spin them together. And what I mean by that is if we put a bracket at the start here and then we put a pipe here and bring that one up and then close that bracket, it's now going to choose either the first title or the second title. We can make that even more unique by now spinning the individual words within both of those titles. So I'm just going to do that really quickly because I am going to set up a real campaign. So ideas for using, that sounds good. Hints for using. Um, advice for using, guidelines for using, suggestions for using. That will do for using, for, I'm going to say visiting. Like you can just type your own ones in there if you want to. Um, for finding, beauty salons. We'll just change the word salons. Let me just do that real quick. And it might seem like we're spending a lot of time doing this stuff, but this is really, really important before we get the campaign going. And remember, I'm explaining all of this and showing loads of different ways. So we've been on here for about 25 minutes and 30 minutes. It would actually be much quicker if I wasn't explaining all this stuff to you and just jumping straight in and getting it done. So beauty salons, um, beauty spas and salons, beauty um, salons and spas, beauty professionals that's fine in billings we'll leave that fine but we'll do the same here salon we'll say um beauty professionals whoops beauty shops billings top tips best greatest tips we'll oh i put tops that's why that's not working just bear with me one second it's not tops, it's tips. And then we can click that. So if we just take a look at that now, whoops. If we just sort that first, tips. Let's just grab that. Suggestions, guidelines, ideas, hints. Okay, so remember, we've got two different ways this title can now be written. It's either going to pick the first version or the second version, but we'll see variations in that. So now if I click the rewrite just for the title, we've got Beauty Salon Billings, Greatest Hints. Beauty Salon Billings, best tips. Beauty Salon Billings, top hints. Beauty Professionals Billings, top suggestions. Beauty Shops Billings, greatest tips. Beauty Salon Billings, advice for finding beauty salons and spas in Billings. Beauty Professionals Billings, ad advice for using beauty salons in Billings. You see, as I'm going through this, not only is just the words changing, but the entire structure of tips for finding beauty professionals in Billings, tips for visiting beauty professionals in Billings, 
We're getting loads and loads of unique variations of that, um, which will be more than enough for one campaign. So that's what I like to do. Ultra spin the title with a couple of variations and then spin each word in, but just use the standard spin on Spin Rewriter for the actual content. It should be unique enough. So I'll drop that in there now. And there we go. We've got the content that we need. Okay, we've got here Beauty Salon Billings. Um, I could change that, spin that, and make that a little bit more unique if I wanted to. Um, but I'm going to leave that as it is. As I said, we are not building hundreds and hundreds or even thousands of links. So we shouldn't have a problem. Let me just quickly check now if we have any questions. I'm just going to read through and see if we've got any of that. Okay, somebody's just asked an absolutely fantastic question there. Um, is Magic Article Rewriter the same as Magic Content by Alex? Um, I got with Rant Snap. Again, best thing to do there is just ask Alex. I don't use Magic Content. I'm not even sure what it is. So um, I use Magic Article Rewriter and I buy my articles for my need articles. There is an option inside the software to use um, some articles that come from Article Builder. I don't use those purely and simply because those articles have been used loads of times. I know they're ultra spinnable, but you don't know how many people are using the software. I mean, there's like um, nearly 100 attendees on this webinar and over 300 registered for it. Um, if you've got the same niche as somebody else and you happen to choose the same one, like the, the content's there for forever. Like I, I would just prefer to know 100% that for the cost of three to $5, I've got an absolutely unique article. Nobody else is using it and I'm spinning it. Um, and I just put that down as one of my costs for SEO. Um, the, the brilliant question that somebody asked, by the way, was if there's a problem, um, is there a problem if I use English articles to link to a Dutch website or YouTube video? Okay, so if I just show you, I should have done this right at the start of the webinar, but I'm going to go to um, google.gr. And uh, this is Google Greece. I'm just going to type in Esther. And just bear with me one second. Um, Esther Visa, sorry. Not Esther, Esther's like 800 million searches a month or something ridiculous. Uh, if I go to Esther Visa, I need to, sorry, this is only showing me English articles at the moment. Let me just quickly switch this to languages Greek. This should probably answer your question for you anyway. Uh, where is it? is it just written in Greek? Just bear with me one second. I can't find Greek. It might be, I've not got a Greek keyboard to write a linear gar, can it? Can't see it, can't see it. Where is it? Sorry about this, guys. I, I, am in the car. No, can't find it. Can anyone see Greek in here? Am I going nuts? All right, let me just do Dutch instead. I'll do Dutch and I'll go to Google, the other Google. Let me just quickly check. Can anyone see it in there? Third column. Okay, one second. Let me just quickly check that. Um, third column. I can't see it. My eyes are going on wonky, though. Where else is the first? Oh, I'm looking in the fourth column. That's why. Uh -huh. Oh, there we go. Alinica. Sorry about that. Right. So let me just go back. If we go to Esther Visa and we go to do, 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 do. we're in Google.gr. Just bear with me one second. 
Sorry about this, guys. Just bear with me one second. Must uh, 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 uh. grab. So, this won't show you the search volume, but the search volume for Estar is 880. We've also got Estar at 5400. This is basically a, um, a a Greek website for a client. And I don't know what, just bear with me one second on this. I've changed the language now, so just bear with me. Let me just quickly check to make sure we are in Greece. That's England. I'm not going to be able to find this now because it's written in freaking Greek. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, one second. Let me just go back and do this properly. Derailing myself here a little bit, but just give me a second. Let me just put that back to English so I can see where, where Greece is. And then I know where the language is now, so let me do it this way round. Um, current region, we want Greece. Save. And then language, we want third column. And then okay. okay, there we go. So we're in Greece and we are Greek. Okay, so Esther. Um, just do a search for that. You can see there, position number two, right by I have, right behind the official website is Esther Greece. It's written in Greek and it's ranking in Google Greece with the location set to Greece. So that gets 5,400 searches per month. And if we click through to this, I think I've done it on this one. Let me just quickly check though. View page source. Yeah, there you go. You see this website SEO by James Upjohn at Certified Limited. It's me that does the SEO for that website. I don't just do it for that one. I do it for they've got a German website. They've got an Austrian website. They've got French websites, Italian websites. And basically, long story short is <coughs> we don't write Greek content for our campaigns, even when we're building PBNs or doing any other type of links. We use English content in Magic Submitter because you can spin it in, in RankSnap, sorry. We use English content because you can spin it and then we just put our keywords in the language or that we need. So if I was building a RankSnap campaign to this website, I would spin my keywords to either be written in Greek or written in English, but the articles would always be English. There's no way that you can spin other languages. They don't flow in the same way that UK ones do. Um, you know, the whole sentence structure can change in Spanish or Italian or French or Greek or German or, or anywhere else. It doesn't, you can't just take one word, spin it, and then the whole rest of the sentence still makes sense. So um, always when doing foreign websites, we are using English articles with foreign keywords. Quick tip for everybody. Um, some of the best affiliate sites we've ever had, or my clients have ever had, I do SEO for people that have affiliate websites. Some of the best rankings we've had have been in foreign search results. You can pay somebody on a place like, even if you don't speak English, you can pay somebody on a site like Fiverr or Upwork to translate your English articles into any language in the world. If you go to places like Mexico or Brazil or you know some of the Southern American countries and you get your articles translated into Spanish, you can put an entire website up talking about the banana diet, talking about tips for weight loss, and the competition there is very low, but the search volume is very high. And so you can have a Spanish website, and even though you don't speak the language, you don't need to because you can write English content and stick Spanish keywords in there. Um, we've done that loads and loads and loads of times, and it's worked incredibly well. So um, don't limit yourself just to the place that you're at. That's why I said that was that was a fantastic question there. And I just showed you that we're ranking this website. That was a little bit round the houses because I couldn't find Greece. But just to bring stuff a little bit closer to home, um, if I was to do a search for something like Driving Lessons Orlando, and let me just spell that right. You, you can see here the number one site for driving lessons Orlando is 
all Florida Safety Institute. And same thing, if I right click view page source and I come in here and do the same thing, search for James, you can see right there as well in their source code, it says website SEO by James R. John at Certify Limited. So that's my business, Certify Limited. Um, I'm doing SEO all, all, all around the world, uh, multiple countries, literally Canada, Australia, New Zealand. I'm doing it here in the UK, and we also have clients in the US and Canada that are ranking incredibly well. So the reason for me showing you that really is I should have done that right at the start, but that was just to say I hope that you feel that I'm qualified to be doing these calls with you. Now, my wife's business, not as sexy in terms of um actual um keyword search volume she's got a beauty salon she's in billinge it's only a small town um you know a couple of thousand people but we only started the seo on her stuff um you can see here we started it in july it went from not ranking to bang it's all the way up at the top of google we've got a bit of a struggle with a company that's been established there for about 15 years that have got the number one spot but my wife's really quite happy to be a business that's only been open a few months and she's already right at their heels in Google. So um, this site here with Arch Rival Browse, which is my wife's website, I've done one rank snap campaign. So the website, I've built the citations as well and I've made sure that it had good on-page SEO. No smoke and mirrors, it's a very low competition niche, but she needs to be at the top of there, right? It's her own brick and mortar business. So um, we haven't done much more for it, as I said, than some on-page SEO. She's got a decent social profile. And then we set up a campaign, actually, as part of that $67. This was the test site that I went and set it all up and did that for and explained about the on-page and everything else. Just cut that, sorry. Cool, cool. So let me ask you before we jump into RankSnap, do you think that... Um, that I'm qualified to show you this stuff and help you with your stuff. Yep, fantastic, brilliant stuff. So just give me one second. I am just gonna have another quick drink and then we're gonna jump into RankSnap and get this set up. Okay, perfect stuff. Um, in the 10 minutes we have remaining, go James. If it goes over a little bit, I'm not just going to stop halfway through. Um, but the great news is, rank snap campaigns don't actually take all that long to set up anyway. Um, you know, we start small, and then as I said, you can, the best thing to do is to jump in and create your own campaign. We've got the content that we need now. And um, I'm going to go in and do this. It might run on a little bit longer than 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes or so, because I'm going to be explaining a lot of stuff. But I just want to show you that there's nothing to be scared about with RankSnap. I'll show you how to do the campaigns. I'll talk to you about a couple of the other features. And then hopefully you will be able to just go off and get your own campaign doing. So um, how do we access the training for $67? Um, I will put a link to that in the RankSnap group at the end. Um, uh, Mohammed says it's in the RankSnap Facebook group. It's already there, but um, I'll put a post to that. Could Google AI detect the spin tax by latent, uh, latent semantic indexing and negativ negative rank ups? Yes. That's why you have to be careful with these tools. What Ruben's asking is, can Google spot that we're using automation tools? Absolutely, right? Google can spot it, and that's why we spin the articles and that's why we order a new article every time we do a small campaign and then we don't get tempted to use that article again. If there's four or five versions of the article that look like they're quite similar out there, you're not going to have huge amounts of issues. If you create a campaign that's got 10,000 links, you're never going to get that level of uniqueness with a campaign. So the problem that you've got there is you might end up with a couple of hundred um, pieces of content out there that all look exactly the same. And then if you're using something like Article Builder, where you're just pulling down a cheap or free generic article, somebody else might post that and then somebody else might post it. And then all of a sudden there's this incredibly huge footprint all over the internet 
And then Google is going to be like, oh, okay, this person's clearly using automation. And then that's where you can get yourself in a bit of trouble. So I'm going to try and show you other things that you can do within your articles to try and make your pages unique as well, so that when it's posting content, it will be as, um, as, as good as it can be. Um, can you use contact snap, content snap? I've not used content snap before, Junior, but um, I'll, I'll check it out for you and I'll take a look at that and then I'll give you my honest opinion within the Facebook group to let you know whether it's good or just pay three to five dollars and get a unique one each time. So here we go now, rank snap. Couple of things in here which are quite good that you might not be using. First of all, there's something in here called Signal Snap. Signal Snap's actually pretty good for you to just get some um, traffic coming to your URLs. The way that Signal Snap works is you take your money site URL, or if it's not your money site URL, it can be um, maybe a YouTube video URL, or it can be your YouTube channel URL, whatever. But basically, you, you take a URL, grab the full version of the URL straight from the browser, visit the website and grab the link like this to make sure you've got the right version. And then drop the URL in, get rid of the trailing slash or backslash, trailing slash, and then put your keyword in. So for my wife, I want to do keyword arch rival browse. And then I'm going to do the same one again, but this time I want it to search for, whoops, I wanted to search for her main keyword, um, beauty salon billinge. We'll click save on that and save on that. And basically what this does is over the next couple of weeks, Rank Snap is just going to go straight, go to Google and it's going to do a Google search for whatever keyword you put in. And then it's going to look in the search results for that URL. And then it's going to click through to the website and it's going to spend a little bit of time hanging out there. OK, that's going to drive up your visitors from Google and it's just going to help as part of your overall strategy. OK, it's just a little simple thing there. I have asked Alex if we can spin these keywords so it doesn't keep searching beauty salon billings every single time. I'm not sure if he's implemented that yet, but as soon as he has, I'll make that known to the whole group. But basically, yeah, there's 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 not much more to signal snap than that. Um, rank snap at some stage is going to go straight into Google. It's going to put in arch rival browse. It's going to find my wife's website. It's going to click it, and then it's just going to hang around on the website for a little while. And Google will think that's a real visitor searching for a brand name and then visiting the website. It'll also go to Google. It will type beauty salon billinge. If we just head over to Google and do that. We'll type in beauty salon billinge it will scroll down the listings to find my wife's website when it finds it it will click that one and then like i said it will just hang out here for a little while and then google will register that as being somebody did that search and they preferred my wife's website the most you can only put two uh, two, two different urls in there at the moment but if you've got a money site you know just do that and as i said um, I did have that running for about a month and I got something like 100 visits, sorry, not a month, two, two months, and I got something like 100 visits for both of those to the website. Um, I, I do believe that's part of the um, reason that it's ranking quite well as well, because Google can see that, that people are genuinely interested in my wife's brand and my wife's main keyword, and they're looking at her website as being the best. So make sure you use that. That's just a very, very simple thing. I will ask Alex if we can have more URLs in here because I would also like to be able to do that. As I said, I want to put a YouTube video URL in there. I want to put a Facebook URL in there. I want to put my Twitter URL in there and stuff like that so that Google can also find my Facebook page, my Twitter page, not, uh, sorry, RankSnap can also find my Facebook page and click through to that as well and spend a little bit of time there. And then it looks like my whole brand's getting some nice signals going to it. So that's a good thing to do. The next thing is the citation scanner. Uh, citations are really, really good for ranking your website in the Google local search results um, in, in the actual map pack. So if we type in something like HD browse billing, you can see there's my wife's business there, Arch Rival Browse and Beauty. This is a different algorithm to ranking in the organic listings, which are underneath. 
And that's actually one of my wife's um, videos right there, you can see. And I have run a few links to that with um, RankSnap. And I have also embedded that into my RankSnap campaign, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So citations are sites like Yellow Pages, Merchant Circle, Foursquare, etc. They're basically local business directory listings. Very easy to use this. You put the business name in, as I've done, it will automatically fill from Google all of the rest of the info. I should have done that in the UK, though, because my wife's based there. So let me just quickly do that. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, we've got all of the stuff there. And then we just click search. And then this will just go through and it will search each of these websites um, so much quicker than doing it yourself manually. If you're doing client SEO, you can always put your client's website in here and click on um, search. And then you can just give them this report, like export results as PDF. So you could use this as an outreach strategy if you wanted to, to say, hey, look, you're not listed in a lot of these places. Um, you can see the ones that we are listed in, the Mirror, the Evening Standard, Scotsman, et cetera but I can also see the ones that I'm not found in. So I can click create citations and then we can create a project and then we could go through and put all of our details in. Okay, so what's, who's the company owner is female. Um, the, the, the business name we've already got, it pre-filled that in for us. We've got the address, but the address isn't formulated properly. Um, let's just change that a little bit city is Wigan and then basically we can just fill this in make sure that this information matches what's in Google Maps we've got the postcode we've got the phone we can fill this stuff in um, email address headline business description website URL we can grab all of that information um, there's the website URL too many tabs open now um, business description um, you don't need to spin the business description for citations and um, Google's quite used to seeing a lot of these the same however you can spin them if you want to keep them unique you might see a slightly higher indexing rate which just basically means that um, more of them show up in the Google search results and ultimately we want these to be indexed for our uh, to, to help our rankings so headline tagline um, Beauty Salon Billinge, business description, we are a friendly, professional, and affordable beauty salon based in the heart of Billinge, Wigan. Okay, so um, you can fill that in a little bit more. I think that that should be all right, but you can see here if you click on here, it says, it gives you some tips. This is saying a minimum of 400 characters. Um, the more that you put in there, the more sites that you're gonna get submitted to. And the reason that says 400 characters is probably because one or two of the sites in that list won't accept less than 400 characters. Um, it's up to you if you wanna spend the time writing it, quite a few of them will accept it. Um, but if you're not sure how many characters you're doing, you can also go to wordcounter.net This is probably a hundred or something and you can paste it in and there you go 96 characters i was pretty close there when i said about 100 so you can use wordcounter.net write what you need to write and then once you know you've hit the maximum characters or minimum characters you can post that in here so basically you would just go through all of this and you would fill it in your google local your google plus local url um, your company blog url your Twitter, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your YouTube, and then you put your keywords in. If you're not sure what these keywords are, just click here for help, and it will tell you here. There are terms, you're, these are the terms you're trying to rank for. So my wife wants to rank for beauty salon village. She wants to rank for hair, no, not hair, she doesn't do hair, HD brows village. She wants to rank for waxing village. And you can see the stars, that's the minimum you're allowed, but you can just carry on with these. We can say um, uh, Hollywood waxing, 
Dillinge, and we can just keep going down the list. You can see here we can go all the way down to 10. Categories, just find the correct category for the business. Um, beauty, there's no beauty. We can say health and fitness. Service one, you can put those in. Again, it will explain to you what these are. I'm not going to put anything in for services or products myself. You can do that if you want to, if you've got products and services to put in there. Um, YouTube video URL. Okay, so that's where we can go to YouTube and we can grab a URL and then it'll upload it to those citation sites once it's created the account on there and it submits our business listing. If that particular directory accepts a YouTube video, we can drop that in and then it'll upload that for us. Um, we can upload our company logo, other images as well, maybe stuff of our um, beauty salon like some pictures of nails, some pictures of waxing, et cetera. And then once we've done all of that, we can just schedule the campaign. So we can say start posting that, and then we can specify at the bottom when we want this campaign to start. We want it to start now. How long do we want to spread it over for? That's entirely up to you how long you want to do it for. But I recommend just leaving stuff at the um, days that it's set for. If you do it over a long, longer period of time, it just means that it's going to take longer to get your links. Um, with business citations, though, typically when business owners decide they're going to go and sign up to business citation sites, they do it all in one hit or they pay a service to do it for them. So it doesn't matter if you just set this to a couple of days, um, you know, three days, spread it over that, click, start publishing. OK, so what the tool will then do, like once you've filled all of this information incorrectly, what the tool will then do is it will literally go to the websites that don't currently have anything found. It will go and find their directory within that website. And then th th this is all the tool's doing in the background. There's no magic to it. What the tool's doing is it's going to Bing. It's finding the sign up link. It will then sign up with a fake email and password. Once it's done that, that site will say, hey, go and verify your email address. So RankSnap will check the email inbox of the account that it's signed up with, and then it will get the activation link. It will then log into the website. It will find the form for submitting all the information, and RankSnap will literally, like, it's not copying and pasting, but I will just say copying and pasting for, for ease of understanding. It copies um, everything that you put in the software here, and then it pastes it into the correct field in the website, and then it clicks Submit. And that's it. Once it's done that, it moves on to the next site and it does it again. Then it moves on to the next site and it does it again. And then it moves on to the next one. And it just works the way down for the amount of time that you specified that it should take to do that. OK. And so this is why just going back to the whole this is just the tool. Um, you need to know what a strategy is, because if you didn't have this tool, you could manually go to Bing. And you can manually hit the sign up and then and then verify the email and submit all of your company information. And you could do that and say, okay, we've done Bing, now let's do Yahoo. Then, okay, we've done that, now let's do Yelp, right? But you can imagine how monotonous that's going to be and tiring and it's going to be frustrating, right? So RankSnap is designed that we give it the information once, we make sure that the information is well spun, we make sure so that there's lots of different variations of whatever content it is we're giving it, and then we say, okay, you now go off and work for us. And it's like having hundreds of little workers there all, all loading up these websites, filling in the submission forms, posting content, and then sticking a link in there. And that link is what comes back to your website. And then that's obviously, as I said, how it can help you rank. So um, that's pretty much the how, how what, what the tool does. I am, Like I said, I am going to show you a full campaign in a few seconds because that's what most of you want. But again, just some other things to look at in here. Links Manager. Once you've actually created links, you can come into your Links Manager and you can see what, um, what RankSnap has actually done for you. So if we come into the Links Manager, you can see here, Arch Rival Browse. I ran a campaign as part of that um, training. And these are the links that is built for me right here. It gives me the email address that it used to sign up. It gives me the actual link. Um, it tells me when it was posted, what type of link it was. And so now that I've got all of this information, I can take these links. I can log into them and make things look a little bit prettier if I want to. Um, I can just do that manually. 
Um, or I can give these links to a client and say, hey, look, here's the links that we built for you this month. Whatever, okay? We've got everything that we need and that has been built. So let's just change that to blog posts. And let's just have a quick look at a few of these. These are all the different blog posts that is created for me. So let's just see um, how these look. So one of the blog posts it created for me is this one right here. HD Browse, I'm going to show you how to do all of this so it can create it for you. But HD Browse on why you should have them. Okay, you can see within this article, there's a link. In this one, it says HD Browse Treatment. If we click on that, that should take us to my wife's website. There you go. It does. Okay. There's a link to my wife's Instagram. There's her full address and company name. And then there's her phone number at the bottom. Okay. That's one of the links that it built for me. This treatment starts with seven, seven separate actions that are focusing on the style and shape of your eyebrows. Okay. It's not exactly perfect because it was fun. That should say and shape rather than in shape. But it's a pretty decent article. It reads well enough. These professionals are educated to do your eyebrows using several different therapies. Okay, so as I said, I give the information and the spun article to RankSnap, and it went off and it created this one for me. Notice, as I said, it's linking here with HD eyebrow treatment, and notice that it's linking to the Instagram. It's got the company name, the full address, and the phone number. Let's take a look at one of the other ones that it built for me. And the reason I'm showing it to you like this is because I then want to show you how I actually did that in the tool. So notice this one. This one's linking to Facebook. It's not linking to Instagram. It does say HD eyebrow therapy at the top, which is the same as, no, it's not the same because this one says HD eyebrow treatment. This says HD brows and why you should have them. And this one says HD brows and the reasons to have them. Okay, so there are some differences in here. In the term in the type of links um this one look the address is also written in a different way it's not formulated like one per line it's actually popped it all in like that and let's just have a look at some others this one says hd brow treatment so it doesn't say eyebrow this one is linking to facebook again but notice that how this one's different this one has actually got an embedded map in it okay because i told rank snap sometimes show an embedded map and sometimes don't i told it sometimes show my facebook sometimes show my instagram sometimes show the full address sometimes don't sometimes include the link sometimes don't okay so um let me just quickly check if you're um fully understanding this or following along and thinking oh okay i understand now like rank, ranks that make sense in regards to what it's doing and how it's doing and then I'll show you the best way to use it. So just put a one in the chat box if everything is clear and you want me to move on to the campaign. Cool, cool. A couple of questions came in there. I'll just get those answered and then we will dive into the campaign, I promise. And let me just quickly check as well. Um, are you all okay if this does end up going on till about 10.30? I always, at the start of webinars, I am always like, oh, I don't want this to go on forever. Why did I agree to do a webinar? But then once I'm in it, I'm like, you can't shut me up. I'll just talk for forever because I love them <laughs> once I get going. So are you guys all right if we go for about another 20 minutes or so? Put a one in the chat box if that's okay with you. I'm trying to get as much into this as possible. Fantastic. Okay, brilliant stuff. Cool, cool. Yes, keep going. Delighted. Okay, fantastic. So let me just quickly answer a couple of these that came in. Is there a tutorial on how to index the links in your training? In my paid training at $67, yes, I actually show. I'll tell you how to do it here now really quickly. Um, I won't show how to do it. I'll just tell you. If you're an expert at SEO, you'll probably be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, Basically, you can download from WordPress.org something called XML Sitemap for Videos. And what you do is you put that plugin on your website, and then you create a new page on your website called Our Links or um, Our Resources or whatever you want. And then you put all of the links on that page with a YouTube video, and then you create a video sitemap and ping Google. Google will come and crawl that page because it's got a YouTube video on it. And whilst it's there, it will also visit all of the links that you've added. 
I only recommend you put like 20 or 30 links per page when you do that. But you can create three or four pages on your website with different videos and export all of your um, your rank snap links like 30 per page. Ping that and we've been getting 60 to 80 percent indexing rates by doing that. Now, I've just explained that if you're quite clued up on SEO or you know what I'm talking about, you'll be like, oh, OK, yeah, I'll just go and do that. If you're quite new and you don't know, um, then just get my training. And I actually do all of that over the shoulder and show you exactly where to get the plugin, what the link is, how to install it, how to get the YouTube videos embedded on your website, how to create the video site map and how to ping it, etc. OK, but as I said, I do like to um, I would just want to try and give as much free value away as I can on this. If you just want to take a deeper dive into that, feel free to do so. But this is no holds barred, right? Just in, we haven't got time for me to show you. If we had another hour, I'd just dive in and show you. Um, let me quickly check. Dave, you've said I don't have citations. Do you mean they're not in your software or you just haven't built any yet? If they're not in your software, I'm not sure if there's different member levels or maybe you're in a country that doesn't have citations. Um, but again, that's something that you can just put to Alex. When Alex owned Magic Submitter and then RankSnap, he started with the US first because that's his biggest market. But for ages, I was saying, please get UK ones. Please get UK ones. You know, it's where I am. It's where my business is, my wife's business, other people. Like, you know, I've got clients here. Um, but... Um, we put enough pressure on that eventually you did it. So if you're in a country that there aren't any, um, that doesn't mean that they'll never get in there. You just need to be asking and asking. And hopefully if there's a few people asking, they can be added too. No problem. Take your time. Right on. No worries. Okay. Um, we love you. Thank you very much, Frank. Appreciate that. Go on another two hours. You're such a good explainer. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Perfect. We'll get the training ASAP. Thank you. I appreciate that. OK, thank you, Michael. Michael shared the training link in the um, actual, uh, you can see there in the sidebar there in the questions. Thanks for doing this. Um, are these links do follow? Some are, some aren't. Um, yeah, it's a good mix of do follow and no follow. But that's good because, again, that just gives another level of diversity to your overall link building strategy. Um, Dave, I'm from Melbourne and I have it um, added that as uh, OTO when I first signed up. OK, so, yeah, you you um, you can pay for the additional citations there. Um, does it matter if you log in from a different country when RankSnap has created the account and or blog? No, it doesn't matter at all. Um, RankSnap uses its own set of private proxies and its own capture accounts. And that's what that's all in the background. OK, if, if any of you are like, I don't know what proxies are, I don't know what captures are. Captures are basically when you go to a website and you sign up, it asks you to fill in some squiggly little writing field, AX27B4, or it says put the hot dog on the plate. All that kind of stuff is designed to stop tools like this from just being able to spam to them. Um, so Alex uses services which will solve them manually. Like literally, there's call centers or you know big centers in places like India where people are sat there with these captures just popping up on their screen and they have to type them in as fast as they can as they appear. And then that gets sent back to the software. And then like, like it's just crazy, right? The, the, how some people make money, but that is legit um, the truth. Like, so um, there's software, there's, there's service providers out there that that's what they do. They just solve captures all day by manually typing them in. Um, and so in the past, when you use tools like RankSnap, or you might have heard of other tools like GSA or, or um, um, SE Nuke or stuff like that, you had to sign up to your own capture solving account. You had to sign up to your own proxy account. A proxy account is just basically assigning you IP addresses to make it appear like you're in different locations. OK, so again, Alex takes care of all of the proxies. This software looks really super easy because Alex is taking care of so much of it in the back end that you don't have to worry about it. I used to have to worry about proxies dying. I used to have to worry about running out of captures. Where am I funding my next captures? The capture center where they were solving the captures decided that it was a, an annual festival, so they all just stopped working. So you couldn't run any campaigns for a couple of – it was a headache, right? So Alex has programmed it all in the background that if one of those goes offline, it doesn't matter. Another one comes online straight away. If that goes offline, another one comes on straight away, et cetera. So much of this is happening in the background, and that's why we're paying what we're paying to use the tool because of all that that's happening. Then finally, before we jump into the campaign, one other thing. Remember I told you that what this tool does 
is it goes to the website, it signs up, it creates the account, it verifies the email, then it posts all the information. What this tool is actually doing is when it goes to like, let's just say, it's not going to Facebook, but let's just pretend it was, right? It goes to Facebook and it needs to make a new post. So the software says, look for the box that says, what's on your mind, James? Click that and then post the content in there. Once you've posted that, look for the button that says post and click post. That's all left in the background. You don't see any of it, right? But then what Facebook does, and so do most other sites, is they change the layout. This box tomorrow might not say what's on your mind, James. It might say, what would you like to post, James? So the tool goes to Facebook, what's on your mind, James? It can't find it, so it throws up an error. It can't post to that website. Alex then needs to go in and investigate why are we not getting a link from Facebook? Why did that not work? Oh, they've changed this. The software can't find it anymore. So he's constantly working in the background on every single website that's in the software trying to fix the codes. Years and years ago, I tried doing this myself by buying an automation bot long before I knew Alex. And I was going in and I was trying to force um, this little automation tool that I created to try and post to Google. And what Google was doing was Google quickly cottoned on to the fact that when people was posting automated um, posts to their site, so every new URL that's generated in Google now, it has a long string of code at the end of it, and it's unique to that one session and that one session only, right? And so I programmed this tool. It took me four or five days to get it absolutely working. It worked great, it, and it worked for about 20 minutes, and then Google changed something, and it stopped working altogether. Right? So um, all that time wasted, I was frustrated, of course. Now, imagine I gave up on the whole idea of doing automation tools, right, because I was just like, imagine trying to do that for hundreds and hundreds of websites where they're constantly changing the way that you sign in, you log in, you get verification emails, et cetera. And the reason they're doing that is because they're trying to stop these tools from working, right? Alex is on this continual battle of Tumblr's not working because they just changed something. So he fixes it, releases an update. Now Tumblr's working, but WordPress just changed something, okay? So you're never going to get 100% of the links that come from this website, but it doesn't matter. It actually works in our favor. If half the links aren't working because the actual owners of the sites have changed something, it means we're going to get a unique set of links when we post this campaign. Then when the software is fixed, the other ones come online, maybe the ones we posted to last time aren't working anymore. <coughs> so the next campaign we submit, we get a load of, load of links on a load of new websites. Every single time we run a campaign, even if we choose the same platforms, we're going to get some variation within where our links are coming from, how many links we get, etc. Um, it's an unnecessary, like it's a, it's an unfortunate thing that that websites make it quite difficult. But it also plays in our favor because, as somebody asked earlier about, can Google detect if every time we run a campaign, we always got a link from Twitter, we always got a link from WordPress, we always got a link from Tumblr. If every single time we got those three links, it wouldn't take Google very long to, for their algorithm to say, oh, look, we've just found a new link. Let's see if there's also one on Twitter. Let's see if there's also one on Tumblr. Okay? If the tool's not working properly and we don't get one from Tumblr and we don't get one from Twitter, uh, but we do get one from WordPress, fantastic. Google goes and tries to find a, a footprint, and the footprint they thought was there isn't. It was there the first time, but it wasn't there the second time. Does that make sense, guys? Like, I hope I'm not going a little bit too deep now, but... Just want to see if you're understanding. Put one in the chat box if you're still following along. Perfect. That's great stuff. Does this tool much more better than Money Robot? Um, this tool is better than Money Robot, in my opinion, because Money Robot's got hundreds of thousands of websites in it, potentially. They've got so many websites in there that are not good. Okay, imagine this, right? And 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 I keep saying I'm going to get onto a campaign. I will do, but these are fantastic questions. Imagine you're a roofer. This is what I always try and sort of imagine myself when coming up with an SEO strategy. Imagine you're a roofer and you know that in order to get ranked in Google, 
you have to do a little bit of SEO, right? Google's not got anything against SEO, really. Like, they don't mind people trying to do some SEO, but it depends on the type of SEO, right? So you're a roofer and you think to yourself, I need to get my website listed and I want to beat all of my competitors. So you, you go to Google and you search how to rank my website in Google. And one of the first articles you read says, submit your website to Yellow Pages, Foursquare, Merchant Circle. So off you go. You go and submit yourself to the top 40 or 50 best USA business directories. And if you do a Google search for that, top 50 local business directories, you'll go through that list and you'll see really common household names, Yellow Pages, Thompson Local, Foursquare, Angie's List, right? Stuff that everybody knows. So if you're listing yourself in that type of website, whether you're doing it through an automation tool or you're doing it manually, that's going to look completely normal, right? Because as a, as a roofing company who doesn't know anything about SEO, they're just trying to promote their business, they're going to find themselves list, being listed in these types of websites, okay? What they're not going to be listed in, though, is roofing directory biz dot X, Y, Z, forward slash Germany, forward slash TTPZ71, right? If you went to Google and you did a search for roofing directories, that doesn't even come up on page one. That directory might not even be indexed in Google. It's just a complete rubbish domain name that doesn't mean anything, right? But if you list yourself in that type of directory, it's very, very, very clear that you're using an automation tool. There's no way anybody would find that in the real world. You bought a list of something or you paid somebody to do SEO. And that runs true for blogging, right? The sites that are in RankSnap, Pear Trees, Tumblr, um, Live Journal, My Strikingly, these are the top 20, top 30 blogging sites in the world. They're in every list, right? What's not in every list, again, is zyx274.jp, right? It's, it's not even a proper – it's nothing. If you start putting yourself on sites like that, it's the quickest way to show Google that you are um, doing SEO, you're using automation tools, you're buying lists, and you're just taking liberties, right? So we want to be focusing on quality, not quantity. You can always build links on sites like Tumblr, MyStrikingly, WordPress.com, and then you can build more links to those new blogs that you've created to make them more powerful because then that makes the links pointing to your site more powerful. It's called tiered link building. What we don't want to be doing is just saying, let's build 10,000 links directly to our website because no proper person would ever be building that amount of links if they was doing something like a small affiliate site or lead gen, um, or they were a legit local business trying to rank their own stuff. My wife's website ranking in a small local niche, it's got less than 20 links, maybe 30 links tops point into it. And it's ranking at the top because it's got good on page SEO. Is there in any real world situation where my wife's going to be on a German forum that's also full of Japanese links? Would, as a local business owner, would she ever list herself on a website like that? And the answer is no. There's absolutely no way. Okay, so the reason why I just went on this big sort of round the houses explanation is the question was about money robot. Is it better? Is it worse? It's exactly the same in that both of them will do the same thing. They'll go off to these websites and they'll create these links and, and they'll put, post the content to them. The big difference is RankSnap is going to be very difficult to hurt your website because all of the sites in RankSnap are very good quality. They're considered the best within um, within the particular um, – what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they're considered the best within their um, account type. So the best 20 blogs, the best 20 bookmarks, the best 20 this, the best 30 that. OK, if you pick up a tool like GSA or you pick up a tool like Money Robot, um, there's thousands and thousands of sites. You only need to click a couple of wrong buttons and you can completely destroy your rankings. With that said, if you consider yourself an expert at SEO and you've got a good strategy <laughs> and you know exactly what you're doing and you think I want a few more links from ranks that can give me, then by all means, there's nothing wrong with you saying, OK, I'm going to take this up another gear. 
and I'm going to look to see what else is out there. Magic Submitter is um, like Rain Snap. It's got more sites in it. Um, but as I said, it's you need proxies, you need captures. There's a lot more going on with it. So um, that's the next level up if you wanted to go there. But you're going to have a whole load of new head headaches with your proxies. With You can scrape your own websites to add to Magic Submitter, for example. But again, there's a hot, there's, there's, there's much more of a learning curve with that one. Um, Rank Snap is totally fine for the majority of what you're going to need to do, especially if you're just getting started or you consider yourself to be an intermediate SEO, because there's plenty more other things you can be doing um, besides building links, great on-page SEO, great social media, building that trust, and then consider the authority. But remember, Rank Snap, we're not just building links to the website. If you upload a YouTube video, you can build links to that YouTube video. If that YouTube video has got a link to your website in the description, you're even though you're building links with RankStack to your YouTube video, you're still helping your website because that YouTube video page is linking back to your website. You can build links to your Facebook page. You can build links to your Instagram page. You can build links to your Pinterest page. You can build links to your Google Maps. You can go and create 10 new blogs, link them all back to your website, and then you can use RankSnap to build campaigns to all 10 of those blogs that you've just created pointing back to your website, right? I run PBNs. It's an advanced strategy. But when I make a new PBN um, post, I run a small RankSnap campaign to that PBN post to just help power it up a little bit. There's so much we can do with this, but we just focus on the quality rather than the quantity. So um, let me just quickly come back to here. How do you index the links? We've explained that. For creating new accounts from well-known blogs, Web 2.0, would it be a problem when somebody else creates them, for example, five gig, and I add these to RankSnap and log in later on myself to add change something? Um, you can do that, Paul. You can go into RankSnap, and you can add pre-created accounts. OK? Um, if we go to the account section, Let's say I already have my own Twitter account. I can put in my email, my login, and my password of my own Twitter account and click activate. I can do the same with LinkedIn, NetVibes, any, any site in here. You can create it manually. And if you already own it, you can drop your logins in there and click activate. Make sure you do that under a new project called Real Accounts or um, Arch. In, in my wife's case, it would be arch rival accounts. If my wife wanted to post to her Twitter, her LinkedIn, and also wanted to post to her WordPress blog, I could put the actual logins of each one of those three in here. And then rather than me manually logging in and posting to those, I could create a little small campaign and tell it to post to her Twitter, her LinkedIn, and her WordPress account, right? Magic submit, uh, uh, sorry, Rank Snap will only do what you tell it to do. So, yes, you can definitely, if you wanted to buy a load of accounts from Fiverr and then put them in here and have them post for them, you can definitely do that. I don't know why, though, because Rank Snap can create accounts for you as well. So, um, it's up to you if you want to do that, but I would probably just create the accounts right inside Rank Snap. And any link that is created, if we just go back to the links manager, in case you ever make a mistake, or you want to make things look a little bit sexier before you send it to a client, um, you can actually, whoops, you can actually get the login details for your links. And there is, sorry about this, just bear with me one second. Oh, it wouldn't be in here, sorry. Um, I thought, yeah, you should add them to here. That would make things a lot easier. Um, export maybe if we export them actually. Let me just quickly see if once I export, I think maybe when I export them, the links, the URLs. Um, yeah, okay, so once we export it, you've got the, the link that you created, and then you've got the um, username, login, password. You can create these for your clients, send them to your clients, check them first before you send them to clients, though, if you want to do that, and you might look at one of them. Like, remember, this created them in, in a, like, a, me setting up a 10-minute campaign, then it was all created. But let's say I have a look at one of these, and I'm not quite happy with something. Maybe there's a spelling mistake in it, or maybe it chose a website header that I'm not happy with. I can just quickly log in 
and I can change imagery, I can change anything that I need to on this, and then I could send it over. Okay, so this is just a, a just at the moment, this good reads that it's created looks like it is just simply a um, like a pro a, a bookmark profile type thing. There's not much on it. Um, if I wanted to, I can log in. I can put a little profile picture in there just to make it look a little bit real before I send it to the client. Um, though they're usually tier two links that I build, though. I'll explain that as I go into the campaign now. Um, tier two links, I'm not as bothered about the quality. Definitely the stuff that's pointing right back to my wife's website, I care about a lot. So every time I want to do anything in RankedMap, I always create a new campaign. You can post back to the blogs that you've already created but I just like to create a brand new set of accounts and post to them as I'm getting started. The reason for that, as I said, is I'm posting to um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I'm adding those links as well. And I don't want to start confusing things by posting back to the same blog and creating a campaign where there's now two posts on the same blog pointing back to the same money site, both linking back to Facebook, for example. So I just create a fresh set every time. Um, it's a very simple strategy and it works, so I don't bother changing it. Um, if you want to get more detailed than that and start thinking about posting back to the existing blogs, by all means, feel free to do that. But this is so simple for me and keeps everything so clean. Okay, we come in here. First thing is the title. So I'm going to say the title of this one is HD Brow Billing. Uh, sorry, this one isn't HD Brow Billing. This one is Beauty Salon Billing. Okay. Money site URLs. You can put different URLs in here. You can put the home page of your website. You can put internal pages of your website. You can put a YouTube video URL, a Facebook URL, whatever URL you want to build links to. Okay. What I recommend though is if you're adding money site URLs to this campaign, you stick to just one. Okay. You could put in there. You want to build links to Facebook at the same time as building links to your website, but you're not getting very many links from these campaigns. So there's no harm in just saying we're only going to build to um, my wife's website, which is our, our tribal browse. So I've got far too many tabs open now. Let me just close most of these. I'm getting completely lost. There we go. There's the website. So money site URL. Again, I always just like to remove the trailing slash. Keywords. If you're not sure, as always, just click and it tells you exactly what it is. So keywords when campaign, one per line or comma, comma separated, max 10 keywords. So I'll do one per line. We'll say beauty salon billing. We'll say um, HD browse billing. We'll say um, waxing billing. We'll just get a few in here. As you said, you can do a maximum 10. I'll just leave it at sort of three or four for now. Um, waxing billing or um, gel nails billing. Perfect. Article title. We spun a great article title earlier. I can just take that and drop that straight into article title here. And then article body. We've got this entire article body here. I'm going to take that. Now, at the moment, there's no links or anything in this campaign, right? It's just exactly as it is. If I was to preview, you can see every time it makes a post, it will put the article title in and it will put the full article body. So what we can do is we can add a few things to this campaign. First thing that I want to do um, as we go down to the bottom, remember, I had it sometimes doing different stuff. I'm going to do this in Notepad because it will be easier for you to see. And let me make the font a little bit larger. What we can do here is we can tell it, we can say something like, for more info, please visit. And then we can drop my wife's URL in there archrivalbrowse.co.uk. I'm going to want to make sure that that's a spun link, right? Not a spun link, sorry, a, a, an actual clickable link. Um, if I click preview on that now, you can see that that link doesn't do anything at all. So I just highlight this. For more info, please visit. And then we can just put in the little hyperlink. Um, and we can say that this apparent URL is fine. Just bear with me one second. We want a URL. 
and I'm going to make sure that this is the right HTTPS version. And then I'm just going to take this right here like this. Okay. So sometimes the, when this builds a link, I want it to say at the bottom of the article, for more information, please visit archrivalbrowse.co.uk. But what we can also do is we can, instead of saying, please visit that, we can put a pipe separator in there. Sometimes it will be like that, or sometimes we want it to actually have a link. So you see here where it says campaign link. Bear with me one second. Oh, never mind. I need to actually type it in first. See here it says Beauty Salon Billinge. I can highlight Beauty Salon Billinge and then I can click Campaign Link. Okay. So now within this article, when it posts it, sometimes it will say, please visit Beauty Salon Billinge. Sometimes it will say archrivalbrowse.co.uk. Okay. And we can literally have that as for more information, please visit. We want to spin this so it doesn't just say for more information. Need more info, visit. Um, check out the following website. Check out the following page. This article was provided by. Okay. And then it's just going to spin loads of those and create those. So that's one of the things that we can do within our campaign. The campaign link, what that will basically do is if it's building a tier one link, it will automatically link back to the website. I probably need to do this in paint so that you can fully understand what I'm talking about. So just bear with me while I open that. Basically, tiered link building, if I just open this, here's a website, your website. We can tell RankSnap to go to Tumblr and create a blog post for us. So I'll just put Tumblr in like that. Okay, and then... We can tell ranks that, but put an article on Tumblr and link it back to our website. But once we've done that, go to a bookmarking website. Let's just say like Dig or Delicious or something like that and create a post to say, hey, we've just created an amazing new Tumblr blog. OK, so now when Google is crawling the whole Internet, it finds this Dig or whatever bookmark. It follows that and finds the Tumblr and says, oh, OK, this Tumblr is good. It's got a link from this place. And then Google reads this and says, oh, wow, this is good. And um, it, look, it's linking back to this website. And then they come back to your website. OK, so you get a little bit of power from this. You get a little bit of power from this. And both of those help your website move up. Right. This is basically. In, it's called tiered link building. This is your first tier because this is the link that's pointing directly to your website. And then the one underneath it is called your second tier. If you ever hear anybody talking about tiered link building, I built two, tier one, I built tier two. There is no end to the tiers. You can build tier three, tier four. A tier four link would link back to tier three, which links back to tier two, which links back to tier one, which links back to the website. Okay. Once you get past tier three, it's not really doing anything for you at all. OK, so if I just change that real quick and let me just put this in here and um, just to make it so I can fit it all on a page. What some people would do when building links is they have a small tier one so they can focus on quality. If Google was ever going to penalize you, it's probably going to penalize you because of the links that are pointing at your first tier, maybe because of links pointing at your second tier. Once you drop down to tier three, tier four, tier five, Google's probably too far away from the money site to worry about penalizing you directly. OK, because ultimately um, anybody could just go out there and spam websites. And at some stage, you're going to have links that are four or five tiers away from your money site. Anything linking but directly back to your website, Google considers you to have authority over. You can disavow those. You can tell Google, hey, look, these are spam links. I don't want them. You've got control over what links are being built to your website, et cetera, in most cases. So your first tier, you want to try and keep this as clean as possible. And you also want to keep it relevant. And you also want to keep it um, good, OK, authoritative, good, clean, relevant links on first tier. What people then do, though, is we need Google to find these links and we need Google to believe that these links have got authority. So let's just say these are blogs. 
Okay, these are your good quality blogs. There's not a lot of spinning in them, etc. But you want Google to find these blogs. And one of the quickest ways to get Google to find the blog and to think that that blog's got authority is to build links to it. So then what a lot of people do is they start building other links to that blog. Bear with me. This is crashed a little bit. It's gone a bit slow. And these types of links aren't as good quality as the links that are on the first tier. They're marginally less good. Okay. So you can build more of these on your second tier. And these will be things like bookmarks, status net sites, <coughs> web 2.0 profile links. They're, they're, they're a little bit spammy, but they're okay because you've got a buffer between them and your website. That doesn't mean go absolutely nuts, because if you build too much on your second tier and Google says, where's that link into, it can make this site te toxic. If it makes these sites on your first tier toxic, guess what? They all point back to your website, right? So we, we can go a little bit more aggressive on our second tier, but we still don't want to go absolutely nuts because we don't want our first tier to become toxic. Um, I don't really do third tier link building because I do just tier one, tier two. But there are plenty of people that do tier three link building. And that will look something like this. You can see it's almost like a pyramid. The more tiers you go down, usually the more links that you build. OK, so these ones can be lots of bookmarks lots of web 2.0 profile not web 2.0 yeah web 2.0 profile links lots and lots of status net they're linking back to links that are slightly better quality and then make sure that these ones are linking back to your good quality stuff because that's what's linking back to your website right um that's always in anything that you do that's the sort of strategy you should use now remember <coughs> as i said that um, this is this is our tier one, okay, because we're linking back to our website. But there might be times where you're using ranked app where you're not building links to your website, you're building links to Facebook. Okay. This then is not your tier one. Okay, because Facebook is linking to your website. Never forget that. Um, you, Facebook is your tier one. So your tier two now moves down. And because that moves down, when you're building links to Facebook, you don't have to start off with the ultimate best quality stuff. You can start off with your, let's just build some bookmarks. Let's just build some status net. Let's just build some web 2.0 profiles because you're not trying to rank Facebook number one in Google. You're trying to rank your website number one in Google and Facebook happens to link to it. Let me just quickly check to see if that makes sense to everybody, everything that I've just explained there. One, everyone got that? Do you warm up the new accounts? No, not at all. Okay, perfect. Great stuff. Fantastic. So now that we've got this in here, for more information, please visit. The reason for me to explain that to you is when I click that campaign link button, that campaign link is telling Magic Submitter, uh, sorry, Rank Snap, campaign link basically means we're not telling it where to link to. The software is going to figure it out for us. Okay. If we've got blogs linking to blogs and we put campaign link, if RankSnap is building a tier one link, it'll automatically link to the website. It'll do that for you. However, if it's building a blog link that's on the second tier, it won't automatically link back to the website because then that becomes a tier one link. So what it does instead is, it looks in the links manager, it finds a blog, and then it will link, it will make that link point back to this link here. Instead of pointing back to Arch Rival Browse, it will point back to whatever's above it in your campaign diagram. Let me just quickly check if that makes sense, what I just said there. <coughs> Not really, sorry. Okay. You understand we've got three, we, we can do up to three, like we've got, in fact, it'll probably just make more sense if I just go on and do the rest of this and then explain what that means. But long story short, we've got multiple tiers in a campaign. Let me just get rid of all of this so that it's easier to see. 
Uh, we've got multiple tiers in a campaign. And sorry about this, guys, but I said at the start, I don't like to leave anybody a lot, leave, leave anybody behind. So I'll just explain this really quickly. So. Oh, oh, I've got white on, that's why I can't see it. So we've got our website here. Whoops. We've got our website, excuse me. And we've, we've told RankSnap to build a blog. Okay. What we can do in here is we can say every time you build a blog, link that blog back to our website. Okay. And we can do that. And every single time it builds, RankSnap builds a link that is a blog type, it's in, in the article, it says build a link back to Arch Rival Routes, which is my wife's website. However, some people in their SEO strategies or link building strategies create blog posts to link back to blog posts. Remember when I was talking about tier two link building? So let's say you said your first tier of blogs and your second tier of blogs or your second tier of bookmarks. When RankSnap's building links, if, it's, if the links are on tier one, it'll automatically add links pointing back to the website if we add a campaign link. Once all of those are done, it starts building your bookmarks, it starts building your blogs, it starts building your web 2.0, it starts building your tier two links, right? We don't want these tier two links to also link back to the website. If they do, then it's not a tier two link. It's a tier one link because a tier one link is anything that links back to the website. So rather than us trying to tell um, ranks that, hey, on a tier one link back to the website, on a tier two link back to um, this instead, like that would get so confusing. All we need to do is add a link to our diagram, like the, to our article, put some and then just click this CL button and that will take care of all of it for us. Okay, it's as simple as that. Um, I tried explaining it, it might get a little bit complicated. They'll probably do a whole webinar on explaining more about tier one, tier two, et cetera, and we need to get on. But basically just make sure in your campaigns you have this where you just take your version of your keyword and hit that CL button. Okay, but again, you can spin that. You don't want it to be that same CL every single time. So um, choose your spun keywords. You can see here, a hair salon, a salon. Okay, I can hit CL there, and then it will choose one of those spun versions when it's doing the article. I'm going to take that one out because I've just done the spin at the bottom. So mine says, for more info, please visit archrivalbrowse.co.uk or beauty salon village underneath that then <coughs> i'm going to tell it to choose arch rival browse then um arch rival browse 32 main street village notice i've still got that um bracket open um wn5 Seven HD. I think that was right. Is it seven HD or seven HR? Seven HD. So I've got that open there for all of that. So I can say add this address, or I'll put a pipe, and then I'll just close the bracket. If you put a pipe and then close the bracket, that says or nothing. Okay. So now if we was to preview that. You can see this one's got the full address at the bottom and it's got a link that looks like that. When I refresh it, it now says Beauty Salon Village, it's got the address. When I do it again, Beauty Salon Village, it's got the address. Now the next one, you notice there's no address there because I told it to choose the address or nothing. Okay, and we can do that with multiple different things in here. So we can tell it to choose the full address or nothing. And then if we put another pipe straight after it, we're telling it to choose nothing or and then we can put something else in there. So I might say, or um, arch rival browse and beauty. Okay. And all I'm doing is just giving it more options here now. So sometimes it will say for more information like this, there's nothing there, nothing there. Now it just says arch rival browse and beauty. Now it's got arch rival browse and the full address. Then it's back to this. You notice we're starting to get a bit of variation in here now. OK, so I like to do that just to mix it up a little bit. And you can also do that with the um, 
with the social profiles. So I'm going to take this social profile link here for Instagram, and I'm going to take that one there for Facebook, and then I'm whoops. I've not even connected them up. I need to get them connected up at the top. Let me get them from the bottom. That was a good catch there. I need to get them linked at the top. She probably has clients who are looking for that stuff and it doesn't work. So back to the rank stamp campaign. Underneath that, our trouble browser or beauty. We can also say, also check out the social. And then again, we can spin. So we can put that one in there. Or we can spin the other one right here. Drop that in there like that. We need to make sure that these are actually clickable links. So we just highlight the whole thing. And then same thing, we just click on that. And then we say it's a URL. And we paste that URL in there like that. That is the Instagram one. So I need to make sure, just bear with me one second. Don't want, I don't want to link the Facebook text to the Instagram post. That would be a mistake. So let me just grab the right one. And then we will go back to the link, put the URL in there. We drop that in like that. We click OK. And then we do the same with this Instagram. And click that link. Grab the Instagram URL. Take that back. Drop that in there. Click OK. So now both of those are spun. And, and we can also do this where we put a pipe at the start of also check out. And then at the end of it, we put the pipe and close that. So sometimes it chooses it, sometimes it doesn't. Let's look at how this looks now. For more information, visit Beauty Salon Millinge. There's the full address, no links to social. There's no links to social in this one or address, but it's got the company name. Um, the next one has got a link pointing back to Instagram. So all that's going to happen now is um, RankSnap is going to go to the blog sites and the sites that I choose. And it's just going to, every time like here where I click preview or refresh, that's what's going to happen. It's going to sign up to that site and then it's just going to post exactly the information on the refresh page. I don't need to worry about clicking refresh or anything like that. I just tell it, go and post this. And that's what it does. It'll go to Tumblr and it'll maybe, maybe if it goes to Tumblr, it posts one version. If it goes to, oh my goodness, so I just lost my entire campaign. Just bear with me one second. Uh -huh. I can't believe that just happened. That should not have happened there. Just bear with me one second, guys. That should not have happened. Um, some of you need to go. Uh, thanks very much for those. Um, you cannot automatically create profiles in all the creation citation platforms that the business may be missing from. It was worth it and very helpful. Fantastic. Um, does this tool require VPS so that it can be run on PC? Um, but this tool right here that we're in, it runs itself. Um, it's all done remotely. Like you don't need a VPS. You don't need anything. You log into the you log into RankSnap, you create your campaign, and then you just close your browser and go about your day. It, it's all taken care of for you in the background, all through databases and stuff. That's why it's so easy and good. You're not tied to anything. If you use tools like Magic Submitter or Money Robot, you have to install them on your machine. And they run for hours. They take your bandwidth and everything else. None of that is needed with. Um... <coughs> do you ever link out to authority sites as well? You can do. Um, it, that's entirely up to you whether you actually want to do that or not. Um, again, that forms part of your overall SEO strategy. You can definitely link out to authority sites if you want. I don't bother because I'm just creating really small um, campaigns. I, I, I've just lost that freaking campaign. Just bear with me one second. I'm not going to explain what I'm doing here. I'm just going to copy and paste everything in so I can whiz back through this quickly because um, I want to show what this will look like. So just bear with me one sec. Um, beauty Salon Billings for that, money site. Um, I need Alex to watch the replay of this and um, see what happened. I accidentally clicked the Facebook link, and rather than opening in a new window, it just opened right here and lost everything. 
um, we need to make sure that doesn't happen. That's well frustrating. HD browse village, but I'll get that fixed. Um, right, uh, let me just, I'm just going to whiz through this quickly so that I can get back to where I was. I will come back in here and tidy this campaign up, but I've explained all that anyway. So, okay, so let me just drop that in there. Um, blog subdomain. I'll come back in here afterwards and finish this. Like, I don't need to explain any of that or waste time doing that. A couple of other things that you might want to do in here, as I was showing you, when you say choose this or this. Um, again, choose this or this, but you can click the map and then you can paste your Google Maps embed code. Okay, so if you go to maps.google.com <coughs> and you type in your business, in this case, Arch Rival Browser Beauty. Sorry, this is running a bit slow. You can click on share on the map and then you can click on embed a map and then you can grab this iframe code and then you can say, drop your iframe code in there. Click OK. Uh, hang on, why doesn't that be uh, invalid? What did, oh, sorry, I didn't copy. I'm trying to paste the whole article in there. Uh, sorry about this, just bear with me. Copy HTML. You can paste your HTML code in here. Click OK. And then there you can see you've got a map in there. Again, same thing though, as I said. You see at the start of this map, there's an open bracket, then there's the map, and then at the end of it, there's a pipe and a close. So if we was to take a look at that, there's no map in that one, but there is a map in that one, okay? So we, we've got a spawn article. Sometimes we want it to have an address and a phone number. Sometimes we just want it to have a phone number. Sometimes we want it to have an embedded map. And sometimes we want it to have a YouTube video, exactly the same thing again, you guys that were asking about YouTube. There's a little link here, embed YouTube, okay? Head over to YouTube, grab your embed code, paste it in here, or paste your UI URL and click OK, and then you can do the same thing. So we might say choose a map or a YouTube video or nothing, okay? And then you can see how we're starting to create these really super relevant um, articles um, that, are, that are all very unique in the links that they've got, the types of embedded media. If you was running this to a YouTube, <coughs> if you was running this to a YouTube video, <coughs> money site URL, you put your YouTube video in there, then when you create the article content, you might want to embed that YouTube video in every single one of the articles it posts, okay? Um, you Or if you're trying to do a Google Maps campaign, you might want to have every single article have your maps in every single one of them. Again, that's up to you how you decide to do that. I like to mix things up by saying choose this or that or this or that just to give you that other element of um, uniqueness. Blog subdomain. When this tool is creating links, we want these links to look as legit as possible. So we can type something in here like Arch Rival Browse, um, which is the company name. Um, or we can say Arch Rival Browse Beauty, for example. Okay, again, we can spin this, but when RankSnap goes to sites like Tumblr, LiveJournal, MyStrikingly, et cetera, it will ask, what do you want your URL to be? So this will become archrivalbrowsebeauty.wordpress.com archrivalbrowsebeauty.tumblr.com, okay? Blog title. We want to put our blog title in there. We want to put our blog description in there. Again, we can take this information straight from our, um, we can take this straight from here. You can click here for help as well. Enter the title of blogs, okay? Blog description. You can just write a little bit of a blurb in here about um, this is, um, uh, this is a blog about the beauty industry, blah, blah, blah. Again, get that spun, okay? And then we want to spin this over seven. I'm not sure if this will let me go with not enough content in there. So what I'm going to do is just take the first paragraph of my article. 
and I'm going to paste that in there like that. Okay, start date. We can start that tomorrow. That's fine. Number of days, seven days. That's absolutely fine. Then we can click next. And then we're on the campaign diagram. Okay, this is the strategy that I was talking about. And this is where you can create tier one, tier two, etc. So a nice, simple, easy campaign to do for you that's probably only going to give you 10 to 20 links, but would be super, super safe, would be to say, go to all of the blog sites that are working currently in RankSnap and post a version of that article with a link back to my website and the other types of embedded media. Post that back. And once that's posted, we want to create some bookmarks that link back to those blogs. We want to create some web 2.0s. Whoops, you have to actually touch it to make it work. We want to post some status net. So we want to create something quite like this, super, super, super safe. You'll only end up with about <coughs> 10, 10 links maximum pointing back to your website, but that, those, those 10 links will have loads of links pointing to them because we're building links to that. That's, that, that's like, the most ultra safe probably thing that you could do in the software ever but that's probably a little bit too safe right um what you might want to do is say we've got enough uniqueness that we can actually have it build a couple of different versions of the blog and so we'll do the same thing again we'll make sure that we have some web 2.0 profiles we'll make sure that we have some status net linking back you see this type of campaign now um there we go. Right. Now we're going to have two lots of blog posts linking back to us, but we want to be a little bit more than that. So we might say, actually, why don't we just bookmark the website too? So we can just drop some bookmarks in on the first tier. And now we might get five or 10 links from there, five or 10 links from there, five or 10 links from there. All of a sudden, we're starting to get a steady amount of links. And if you're thinking five, 10, 15 links isn't a lot, somebody do me a favor and put a post <coughs> uh, put a post with any keyword it doesn't matter what the keyword is maybe something like a local niche plumber miami carpet fair orlando whatever anyone first person to type just a random niche wedding photographers in birmingham okay perfect i'll do that I'm going to go to a website that I use. This is a tool that I use that tells you how competitive stuff is and how many backlinks they've got. Okay, it's always good to know your industry before you start going hell for leather and messing everything up. So the person that's ranking number one is Jonas, Joe, sorry, Joe Hastings Photography. Let's take a look at Joe Hastings Photography. And we can go into somewhere like Ahrefs, or you can use Open Link Profiler, which is free. It's just openlinkprofiler.org. But basically, if we log in, we can put the URL in, and it will tell us how many backlinks and how many different websites are linking back to Joe Hastings. So let's just put that in and see. 149 different referring domains with a total of 3,000 backlinks. We don't really need to worry about the amount of backlinks because one website can link back to your site a thousand times. You'll have a thousand backlinks, but it's only from one referring domain. So the thing that we're interested in here is referring domains. They've got 149 of them. Let's click through and take a look at the types of links that they've got from 149. Okay, um, paperblog.com. So they have got a blog site in there. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of related sites in here. Wedding Ideas, Mag, Whimsical Wonder Weddings, Bride, Ma Bride Magazine, your, You and Your Wedding. All of these types of links here are ones where you can just visit the website. They're niche related. You can go there and find out how she got a link. And you can see if they've got a manual place for you to submit and get those links as well. This is called competitor link building. And it's where you just spill the links of your competitors. That works incredibly well as a link building strategy, right? But as we go in here, you'll also see, um, if you dig, that there will be things like Web 2.0 blogs, et cetera, in there. So we can do the Web 2.0 blogs. 
What we can also do as well, though, let's say that we took this client's website and we took like rockmywedding.co.uk. I've got no idea what rockmywedding.co.uk is, but this is where we can make ourselves better than our competitors. <coughs> this website, it's just a blog. And is there a way? There's a newsletter planning real weddings find a supplier visit our forum okay so they've got a forum rock my wedding community rock my wedding so what i could do with this is i could sign up to this forum i could make some posts let's say i was a wedding photographer and i could make some posts and get links pointing back from rockmywedding.co.uk but i want to be slightly better than my competitor they've got that link so have i so what do i do i take my profile link on rock my wedding and I use that as my money site URL in RankSap, and I build 5, 10, 15 links to it to power it up. Now I've got the same link as my competitor. We've both got a link from Rock My Wedding, but my one's more powerful because I've got links to it and she hasn't. Okay, does that make sense, what I'm saying, everyone? <clears throat> Let me just quickly check if you're following along. No. Someone said no. Michael said no. I'm lost, but that's okay. Love it, love it. Okay, cool. Some people are saying yes, some people are saying no. How long does it take to take the link to rank after the campaign? Um, I don't understand the links. The the links don't really rank. I'm I'm not under, I'm not under, 100 percent sure I understand your question there, Bala. If can you ask that maybe in a slightly different way? Okay, so. Basically, if we have a look at our rank snap campaign, we've built this campaign now, and if I click complete, it's gonna just run that campaign. What's gonna happen is rank snap is gonna go to all of the blog sites that are in this um, tool, and it's gonna create an account, then it's gonna verify the email, then it's gonna post all that content I just told it to. It's gonna run that over three days or however many days I've told it to run it over. Once that's done, it will then start building links to the links that we already that we just created. So we'll have a, a, a bookmark link that links back to the blog post and it will just run through this campaign. Something like this is a small campaign. It won't absolutely rinse your credits. It will give you if you're using one unique article with each one, it will give you a nice foundation of links pointing back to your website. OK, then. You literally order another article and then you hit the campaign, create campaign button and you set up this exact same campaign. But instead of saying that you're linking to your website, you're now going to link to other links, right? You're going to link to just your Facebook page, just your Instagram, just your YouTube videos, right? We're now going to start building links to our existing links. If you don't have any existing links currently, don't worry about it. You can use tools like like Ahrefs to find out where your competitors got their links from. Okay, so let me just show you that again. Somebody gave me the keyword wedding photographer Birmingham. Let me have a look and see. So most of the remember these guys are ranking number one in Google, right? That Joe Hastings. I I, I got a keyword. I went to Google. I took the person who was number one in Google and said, "How did these guys rank?" Okay, and I used Ahrefs to have a look to see what links they have. And so in Ahrefs, if we see the types of links by clicking on referring domains, we can see what links Joe Hastings Photography has. And you can see most of her links, if we just sort this. Okay, there, look, Maya Wed. Okay, she's a wedding photographer and she's got links from websites like Maya Wed, Creative Mornings. She's got Rock My Wedding, Pride Book. Rock, rock and roll bride. Okay, she's got loads and loads of links pointing to her website that are related to her industry. That goes back to that diagram that I drew in here. I, I deleted it, but um, in the diagram, I just talked about having good related. There we go, clean related and good links on your tier one. So she's got that. Okay. She's got links from sites like Creative Mornings, Rock My Wedding, Bride Book, Rock and Roll Bride. Great, great, great links. Okay. A lot of these links, if we click on them to find out what type, what this link is, so we can click on here, Whimsical Wedding, Our Wedding Ceremony. Let me click through 
So Whimsical Wonderland Weddings is currently linking back to Joe Hastings and Joe Hastings number one in Google. So if a link from here got her number one in Google for um, Photography Birmingham, if I'm trying to rank for Photography Birmingham, I also want a link from these guys, right? So I can go and find out how did she actually get this link? It looks like it's a guest post, okay? So what I can do is I can contact this blog and say, hey, I noticed that you're linking out to Joe Hastings. She's a wedding photographer in Birmingham. I'm also a wedding photographer in Birmingham. Would you consider giving me a link? This business might come back and say, oh, yeah, send us an article and we'll post it. They might say, oh, Joe Hastings paid $200 to be listed on this blog. You'll have to pay the same. I can make a decision whether I want to pay that $200 or not to be listed. But in any case, once I get a link on this site, I'll have my own page. Joe's is our wedding ceremony, forward slash our wedding ceremony. Mine might be forward slash James Upjohn Photography, for example, right? I can take this URL and I can put it into RankSnap and then I can build a campaign to this URL. It will make my link on this website more powerful than Joe Hastings' link on the same website. If I went through and got all of the links that she had, with the only difference being I was running rank snap campaigns to the links I was getting, I would have a much better backlink profile than her. My links would be that much more powerful. Okay, so I just want you to think about how you can use rank snap. You can use it for linking back to your websites. You can use it for linking back to client websites. Anytime you acquire a link manually, you can then open up RankSnap and build a link to, like build an entire campaign to that new link. All we're trying to do here is we're not focusing on quantity. Little small campaigns that are going to give you 20, 30, 50 links. But we're going to just keep bashing these out to absolutely every, every property that we own. And that's going to fly us up the rankings. But more importantly, it's going to keep us there because we're doing this nice and subtly. And we're mixing RankSnap with link building strategies like finding our competitors' backlinks. So just to show you that again, if I um, take a look, somebody said, um, somebody said, um, Wedding Photographers Birmingham. Somebody else said Bathroom Renovations Melbourne. Now, I want to show you this. The person who was number one for Wedding Photographers Birmingham had loads and loads of links from websites that were related to weddings. Okay, This is why there's so much more to SEO than just loading up at all and just firing a load of links here. I'm going to show you this real time now. Bathroom Renovations Melbourne. Okay, let's take a look at this. The bathroompro.com.au is number one. Okay, if we take a look at their backlink profile, I would not expect to see many photography or wedding type links at all. Okay, whoops, just bear with me. Let me get that in there. So this one's got 143 referring domains. We can click on this and see where they got their links from. I'm going to expect to see loads from remodeling sites, construction sites, etc. Okay, and you can see here, look, the bathroompro.blogspot.com. You can build that link in RankSnap, right? Blogspot links, they're Web 2.0 profiles. You can literally get Web 2.0 profiles. There's another one he's got there, look, blogspot.com. But look at where his links are coming from. Top bathroom renovations.com.au, <coughs> home wallpaper, extraordinary home design. Okay, we can do the same thing if we want to rank number one in Google for um, the bathroom pro. Like, if we want to rank number one in Google for whatever that keyword was, then home remodeling, uh, bathroom renovations, Melbourne, same thing. Find out where they got their links from. We can run rank stand campaigns directly to our website, make sure we've got good on page SEO. But we can also find out who's already ranking in Google, find out where their links are coming from, and then we can just duplicate them. So provenexpert.com. If you, if you click on links to target in a tool like Ahrefs and you visit the website, provenexpert, can I get a link from provenexpert.com? Um, this is not in English. Let me see if I can change that.
Tour advantages, testimonial pricing, expertise, uh, sorry, enterprise knowledge. Let me just click on knowledge and find out. Yeah, they like here, look, it's all about trust. Proven experts, everything you need to know about customer review marketing. Um, we can see here there's a link that says get started. So this is a website that I could sign up to. A test, uh, 30 days premium membership after that. It's uh, simply continue with the tree free version. So I could sign up to this website and I could submit my detail, company details if I was a renovations company and uh, I can get that link. And so now I can just box that one off. I've got that link. Then we move on to the next one, amara.org. Can I get that link, right? So you have to know your niche. It's not just a case of, okay, I think I'm gonna do SEO. I'm just gonna chuck any old website together load up at all that ranks app and just fire loads and loads of links here and then i'm going to be ranking i've just shown you there that you need very specific types of links for ranking in very specific types of market wedding links from great quality wedding stuff has helped wedding photographer rank loads and loads of like home renovation type links have helped the home renovate a link right what we can do to speed up that process is we can get these links but then once we've got those links rather than waiting three or four months for Google to find the links and action them, we can say, okay, now we've got that link, let's fire a rank stack campaign to this new listing that we've created on this website, because that's gonna massively speed up the process and it's gonna give us an edge over our competitors. Okay, so that's the whole point of rank stack, why you should use it, how you should use it. There's gonna be plenty more applications for you to do it as well. But to get started and for you to feel comfortable, watch the webinar replay back and what I'll, uh, yeah, watch the webinar replay back. What I'll try and do as well, guys, is this has been like over a two hour long webinar. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'll upload this full webinar, but I'll also stream it back so that we're just talking about the bit where we're doing the rank stack campaign for easy reference for you moving forward so that you can just literally go, okay, I've loaded up rank stack. Let me just follow this and get the campaign done. Okay, I'll get both of them uploaded for you. Um, and if you've got any questions at all, um, just specifically about how to use RankSnap, what's happening with RankSnap, what campaign, did I do the right campaign, I'm not sure, tag me in a post in the RankSnap Facebook group, I'll be more than happy to help you out for free. If you want to take things to the next level, you want to get a little bit better campaigns, or you want to see more over the shoulder campaigns of me setting up a YouTube campaign, a Facebook campaign, for example, and doing on-page SEO and doing all of the rest of it, um, PBNs and everything else, then just sign up for my $67 training. And there's like six of these types of webinars. Like I literally talk to you about how to properly set up your Facebook, your YouTube, your uh, Google, how to link them all together properly. And it, like all of that, imagine this one webinar, but then there's like literally six of them where we cover topics like YouTube marketing and um, Facebook marketing and everything else as well. So guys, if you're interested, please consider signing up to that. The link is just the Alex Brulick one that's in the RankSnap group. Um, other than that, before I go, it's been on quite a long webinar. Has anyone got any questions at all, specifically about RankSnap? How long does it take money sites to rank or see it in Google after running the campaign? Is it after three or four weeks? Yeah, it, it will be because um, it takes Google time to crawl the internet and find the links. There's over a trillion index pages in Google and it takes Google about three months to crawl every single page in its index. So um, you can build links today and Google might not even be aware of them for three months, right? The good news about building them on better quality sites is that Google visits those websites more frequently than once every three months. So, um, but we still are playing a waiting game of how long it takes Google to find links. However, if we build tier two links, like I showed in the ranks that campaign, if you build tier two links, you're giving Google more chance to find these links quicker. Google might have just visited Tumblr when you built that link, and it might not be visiting again for another couple of weeks. However, Google might visit Digo Delicious, whatever the bookmark site is, find a link pointing back, and that forces Google to follow that link back to here. 
Okay, so having a nice tier two, a tier three if you want it, not necessary, but if you want to speed things up even more, you can cast a really wide net on tier three, a slightly smaller net on tier two, and then your tier one links, as we said, we keep that quite tight. Um, we don't need many of these. Remember, if I, let me just quickly close out of that and go into accounts. Okay, not all links are created equal. Some links are considered better than others. Okay, Web 2.0 profiles are not amazing links. You won't want to blast loads of these at your money site. But look, there's 52 of them, right? If we was to look at 52 of those, and then we was to look at four of those, and we were to go into blog posts and look at, there's 20 of those. We're already at 70 links. Bookmarks, there's 12 of those. We're at 82. Okay, we build all of these to our website, even if we built them on tier one, we're at sort of 80, 90 links. Google's not going to find and index all of them. Let's say it finds over the course of three or four months, it finds half of them. We end up with about 50 links pointing into our website. Great, because we've also got our social links pointing into our website. We've also got the competitor links that we're building pointing into our website. We've also got all the citations that we built pointing into our website. Remember, the, the people that are ranking at the top of Google for the bathroom front, they only had 140 different websites linking back to them. The other one only had about 149, 150 linking back to it. We're not talking thousands and thousands of sites on these local niches. And also for a lot of affiliate stuff, we're talking quality over quantity. And if you ever get Ahrefs and you start digging into it, you'll realize that from almost every local niche, it is quality, not quantity. Any random, of course, there's going to be some that are super competitive, right? And there's no point even looking at them. Let me show you an example of that, just by comparison. Let's say real estate Melbourne, rather than um, rather, real estate, probably the most competitive niche there is. Okay, if we go and look at a site like realestate.com.eu, and we put that in Ahrefs, this is where you can determine whether you're in the right or wrong niche before you even get started on SEO. You should be spending more time on this than anything else, right? I want to compete with realestate.com.au. They've, they've got links from 29,900 different websites, okay? And the, the value of the traffic that goes to their website is worth $3.3 million per month. I am never going to rank that if I was to try and compete with that. I'm never going to rank that using rank snap alone. Okay, it's just not going to happen. These guys have got links from places like the equivalent of Fox News, CNN, um, you know, ABC News, that type of stuff. These are like got the best links that are available online. And how they get those links is by contacting those places and saying, hey, will you write about us? And they say, yeah, but it's going to cost you X. And the bigger and better the website is, the more it costs for a link, right? This is called guest posting. And uh, some guest post places will charge you $600 for one link, right? And then you're going to try and compete with somebody that's got $29,000 of them. So um, they're, they're, they're more than happy to spend that amount of money in their niche because, as you can see, their traffic value is worth $3.3 million per month, okay? So... Um, these guys have super huge budgets. They really, really push hard on SEO. You're not going to compete against them. If you are new to SEO and you put your keyword into Google and you realize the top three or four sites look like these ones, my best advice for you will be just to start again. Find another niche, okay? Um, because unless you've got thousands and tens of thousands per month for ranking, it's um, you're, 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 never, you're, you're better packing your losses now and, and finding something easier. Okay. Again, though, if you're not sure on that, feel free to just tag me in a post in, ranks, in, in the Rank Snap group, and I'll be happy to look at what niches you're going after and stuff like that. I hope this has been beneficial for you guys. Um, any questions at all, post in the Facebook group. Um, my Rank Snap training is available, so feel free to do that. If you are interested as well, um, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, if you've got a website that's stuck and you just need somebody to look over your on-page SEO, jump on a Skype call with you and spend an hour with you. Um, that's not cheap, though. That's $100 an hour. But there will be some of you that might think, I've done everything that I thought I would and I'm stuck. I'll just pay James $100 to jump on a call and we'll just go literally for a full hour recorded, me and you, and, and we'll look through everything and hopefully get your site unstuck if it's stuck. 
or help you choose a better niche if you think you've chosen a rubbish one, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's available too, guys. So um, I hope this has been beneficial for you. I'll try and get the recording up um, either before I go to bed this evening or in the morning. But other than that, um, thanks so much. I hope it's been beneficial for you and I look forward to connecting with you all soon. Guys, thanks so much. It went much longer than I thought it did, but I really hope that you don't mind that. And uh, yeah, if, if you found this super helpful, we maybe do another webinar or two in the following months. Thanks very much, guys. All the best. Take care. Good night and God bless. Two dollars and a half.